We bring in the studio this morning one of the gay rights activists, Mr. Should I call you Mr.? Sure. Pepe Julian Onzima. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for Good morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. You are a transgender. What, 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 what shows that I'm gay? You are a transgender yes, and you're a gay rights activist and an outspoken um, uh, uh, lesbian, homosexual. How can I describe you? Now, we're looking at the raging debate. Uh, you're a gay rights activist. Why should someone be gay? You're having a girlfriend. Yes. Do you perform the natural obligations? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sexually active right now. So what are By you doing choice. with this lady? By choice. By choice. Yeah. I've just not, uh, I've chosen not to engage. Doesn't that make you gay? What do you mean doesn't that make me gay? I am, I am male and attracted to a female. So who is gay? Salaam alaikum. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. This is now Salatu Sam Sulabat. So family, I discovered this article a couple of days ago. As you can see, it was published on September 23rd. And this is the article says KFCB bans all movies with LGBTQ plus content in Kenya. And I'll leave the link in the description. And it says here, KFCB acting CEO uh, Christopher Wambua maintained that same sex films and movies are prohibited in the Kenyan constitutions, hence the board will continue its crackdown on such content in the mainstream media. Mambua went on to the cite examples of films which had been barred from the broadcast, such as I Am Samuel. If you guys don't know, this is an African documentary of this homosexual guy in Kenya and his relationship with another homosexual. And since, I wanna say about 2020 or so, like since pr pretty much since the end of Barack Obama's reign, there have been numerous of these types of documentaries popping up all over Africa. So the Kenyan uh, authorities have taken a stand against it. Wambua went on to cite examples of uh, such films as I Am Samuel due to what he's termed as explicit portrayal of homosexuality related scenes. So I just want to remind you of what Barack Obama had said to the Kenyan president a few years ago. I've been consistent all across Africa on this. Uh, I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law, and that they are deserving of equal protection under the law, and that the state should not discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation. And I say that recognizing that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs. But the issue is, how does the state operate relative to people? The fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. It's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. This is why I repeatedly say that for Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that our day-to-day -day living for our people. Barack Obama was the president for eight years in the United States because of the black community. And even when the black community had put him in power and the Democratic Party, he did absolutely nothing for black people and went not just all over the states, but internationally, particularly in Africa, trying to pressure African leadership into 
what he calls human rights with the LGBTQs and whatnot. Barack Obama, who abandoned the black community and became the single most influential personality with regards to pushing the LGBTQ agenda, not just uh, domestically, but internationally, and heavily pressured African countries into this uh, LGBTQ stuff. He goes and he presents this argument to the president of Kenya, and now what we're seeing is uh, Africa being flooded with these types of documentaries all over the place. So now Kenya has taken a stand, and it's not just Barack Obama. It is also your Western media outlets who are trying to pressure Africans and African leadership into uh, these these LGBTQ stances and whatnot. So, for example, if you look at Christiane Amanpour and her first interview with the brand new, newly elected president of Kenya, William Ruto, this is what she asked him. I want to talk to you about a specific, you know, human rights situation in parts of Africa and including in your own country. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I want to know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law. We have Kenyan constitution. We have our tradition. We have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. So before I ask you to flesh that out and what exactly does it mean, I want to play you what President Kenyatta said to me about this issue. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. So he's basically saying homosexuality is not agreeable. You've just said that you're kind of trying to thread the needle, that the law says one thing, but you respect everybody's rights. Will a Ruto administration crack down, like many other leaders in Africa, on the homosexual LGBTQ community, or will you allow them their human rights and their civil rights? I think on that subject, President Kenyatta was spot on. We do not want to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When, the people of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya will make a choice, and we will respect the choice of the people of Kenya. For now, Christian Amanpour, let us focus on the real issues that affect our people. So you can see that your political and media outlets are showing incredible disrespect and boldness in regards to Africa when they see Africa as suffering under the feet of colonialism, but they're going out and trying to pressure the leaders of Africa into something that has nothing to do with them at all. And I do believe that this trend will actually spread within Africa. And why do I see that? Well, I'm going to show you a few examples of some of the African pres presidents uh, what they, when they were asked the same questions.
Zambia is a religious conservative country. And it has some of the toughest anti-homosexual laws in Africa. Many in this congregation are avid supporters of their president's stand against gay rights and appalled at the American diplomatic intervention. And the Zambian leader was unequivocal about his stand on the issue when he spoke to us. Uh, we are saying no to homosexuality. Why should you say we're going to be civilized if we only allow it? Are you, th are you saying we are very primitive now because we are frowning upon homosexuality? Even animals don't do it. Why should we be forced to do it? Because we want to be seen to be smart, to be seen to be civilized and advanced and so on. On the question of human rights, on the question, for example, of same-sex rights, never mind same-sex marriage or anything like that that might be in the future, for want of a better word, gay rights, the overturning of laws against homosexuality. Can you promise me today that you will do that? Pat, I'm a constitutionalist. The current provision in the Constitution forbids same-sex marriages and uphold that until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. Not same-sex marriage. I'm talking about same-sex, same-sex relationships. Never mind. We can put marriage to ourselves. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current Constitution, it is banned. Are you going to lead a campaign no, I will not lead the campaign. Why not? Those people who want that are the people who must uh, canvass for such things so that if they are able to win majority in amending the constitution, they would amend it. But it's not my duty on that uh, issue to say I want to campaign for this. No. Of course it is. Your, with respect, Mr. President, of course it's your duty. It's your duty to, 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 to uphold human rights as recognized by the United Nations and as it recognized by the It is my countries. duty. It's my duty to obey my constitution. Correct. I would not be persuaded to violate my constitution. Currently, my constitution says what I have said. But the constitution does not forbid people with different opinions. They must converse with the opinions which they have. So I'm asking for your opinion, both as a man and as president. Are you in favour of changing the constitution on that issue? No, I am not. It's never a priority in Zimbabwe to deal with that issue. During 2013, when everybody was able to converse, those who conversed for that position lost it. We go by the majority view of our people. And currently, the majority view is what I am stating. So you keep Zimbabwe in a different age. In an, never mind same-sex marriage, but in an age when the European Union, the United States, like Australia recently uh, enacted same-sex marriage. And, it's pretty much... Oh, no, I don't, much, your country I, I don't is, think that, is in a uh, very small minority. My, I don't think with my priorities today, I would grow my economy, right? Uh, 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 increase the standard of life of my people, putting that as a priority. Our priority now of my government is to embrace the international community and uh, say Zimbabwe is open for business. Let uh, uh, people who want to invest in Zimbabwe say this is what they want, these are the constraints they see, and this is what I believe is necessary for us to grow, to catch up with some of the developing countries in our world, One more in our this. region. One more on this. I, would, I, I venture to disagree with you, Mr. President. It is, that's Sh democratic. Surely, by changing, whether it's on women's rights, gay rights, whatever rights it is, human rights, surely by changing those, you really send the true message that you're not just interested in money coming in for dollars for business, but creating an equal environment for all. Surely that's a much more powerful message than just asking for a bit of extra foreign direct investment. It's not a question of having dollars in Zimbabwe. It's a question of development. We must have functional railway systems in my country. We must have functional uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, highways and so on. We must have functional manufacturing sector in the country. 
I must modernize and mechanize my agriculture in Zimbabwe. I must have a developed uh, mining sector in Zimbabwe. These are the things, as far as I'm concerned, are the issues which my people look at for government to address and uh, uh, facilitate for their development so that we catch up with members of the region. What is your message to Western human rights groups to President Obama, respect, to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender re re people. Respect African societies and their values. If you don't agree, you just keep quiet. Let's manage our society the way we see. If we are wrong, we shall find out by ourselves. Just the way we don't interfere with yours. Mm. Do you personally dislike homosexuals? Of course, they are disgusting. What, what, what sort of people are they? How can you go? Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I never knew what they were doing. Uh, that's how I've been told recently that uh, what they do is terrible, disgusting. But I was, I was ready to ignore that if there was proof that that's how he's born, ab abnormal. But now the proof is not there. This is why I believe this trend will spread throughout Africa as African leadership has been very consistent and firm in their stances against this LGBTQ agenda within African countries. And you have Western backed media outlets who are trying to pressure these countries and they're just standing firm. Meanwhile, in the world's largest producing expatriate Muslim country, Pakistan, we have here, did Pakistan really pass LGBTQ bill? And over here in the New York Times, in Pakistan, a leader in trans rights, reality is slower to change than law. You can't make this stuff up. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her, and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump.